So the purpose of our presentation, um, and we'll go to the next slide, is really looking at what I'm hoping to achieve for us to learn together is looking at this concept of learning agility and how it is connected to mental resilience. Uh, we're going to be learning um, a few strategies, uh, first of all, starting off with energy management practices and how that does that help us become more resilient. Uh, I'm going to present a four steps framework that you can utilize to enhance your mental resiliency and also prepare yourself for reflection. And then we're going to learn about these micro behaviors or small moments, small practices that you can integrate during your daily life. In, in small bursts throughout the day to help you become more resilient. And finally, I'm gonna tie this all together by us looking at the concept of learning agility again, and based on the resiliency practices we've learned and then some additional re reflection tools that we're gonna be using together, how does that all then at the end make us an effective agile leader? So what does, what does the concept of growth mindset and learning agility mean? So first of all, let me set a little bit more uh, of context for all of us here today. With our current situation, as you know, um, in healthcare, especially dealing with COVID-19, we are in a high challenge environment. We have a lot of stressors, a lot of new problems, novel situations. And what we've found, the research has found, is that learning in agile individuals can cope and thrive in these high challenge environments really well. So why is that? The reason is that they have this mindset, a mindset that provides them with a set of practices that allows these leaders to continually grow and develop and utilize a set of strategies that help them be successful, especially when the organization is facing, um, I would say, complex problems or new kind of problems. So that's really helpful. Learning agile people, they take ambiguous situations and they apply uh, different ways of looking at things. And, and they continue to remain resilient during that process. So, you know, at the bottom, there's this sort of arrow that shows fixed, mixed to growth mindset. This is kind of like a muscle. For, for all of us, we can all become agile leaders. The idea is to implement certain practices in the way we think, and then we can move from a fixed mindset over time to a mixed mindset to finally a growth or learning agile mindset. So this, uh, this particular slide, as you can see, has a little bit of an arrow. And it's showing you what are some of the impacts for leaders who are learning agile? What kind of outcomes do we see in them? So the first piece you'll see often in learning in folks who are agile in the way they think is that they're very focused. And what I mean by that is they continually refine and polish themselves. They're organized, they're driven, and they're very methodological. Like they're very particular in the way they approach certain issues and problems when they're faced with this. The second big area that you'll see, um, you know, as we all progress towards this learning agility state is that um, folks who are more learning agile are less accommodating. So what do I mean by that? They challenge others, as in they're looking for feedback. They seek feedback, they, they're not afraid to challenge the status quo, and they welcome others' opinions, and they also are comfortable expressing their opinions, even if they're different sometimes than others. And then the final piece is that through learning agility, as we practice more learning agility, we all become resilient. So what does resiliency, resiliency look like in a, in a person who is learning agile? Well, they're much more at ease. They're calm when they are, they are in a high pressure situation. They're more optimistic about the end outcomes and they rebound quickly from stressful situations. So you can see that as you become more, more agile leader, you'll move through this sort of curve and grow in these areas. But the last thing I wanted to point out is that in order to start to practice moving ourselves from fixed mindset to growth mindset, um, or to become more learning agile, you also need a baseline, some behaviors by which you are resilient, resilient or you're practicing certain things that are making you more resilient. And we'll talk a little bit about further in the next few slides, how do we get there? How do we, how do we become more resilient? So this is the first um, area that I wanted to speak about, which is about energy. 
And why is energy important? So energy management is really a starting point to achieving resiliency. And there's four parts to energy. The first is your physical or your body energy. There's emotional energy. There's mental or mind energy. And final, finally, there's spiritual energy. So the, let's start with the first one, the first category at the top. So body energy or physical energy really is the fundamental source of fuel in life. So things like eating healthy, uh, be, drinking enough water, sleeping and exercise are all components of physical energy and how to fuel that and how to maintain that. Then what is emotional energy about? So emotional energy is things that help us perform best. And in order to do that, we must access pleasant and positive emotions like experiencing joy, challenge, adventure and opportunity. The key muscles that fuel positive emotional energy are self-confidence, self-control and empathy. And we need to continually foster this amongst um, you know, ourselves. Now, there's negative emotions and positive emotions. And so something that we have to think about is we have to balance the two. Right. We face both throughout our day, throughout our lives. And the key is for us in very intense situations, we need to be able to draw on the positive energy to help us be effective as leaders and also handle the crisis that we're facing. So the third energy, as I was mentioning, is mental energy or mind. And this area is really focusing. It, it's a way to look at the world. So we have a worldview where we're continually engaging in the world to bring about positive change. And many of us do that in the current roles we're on, especially in healthcare. We care about our clients, right? We wanna do well for them. We care about their quality of the care that they receive. And at the same, so we have, we, we constantly strive towards that, recognizing that the world is not a perfect place, but we are gonna to contribute towards positively improving the world. And that's the, the crux of the mental um, energy. And some things that help us become more effective or to manage our mental energy is includes uh, positive self-talk, effective time management, uh, thinking about visualization, right? Thinking about positive things that will be happening. And the final piece is to engage in creative things. And we'll talk a little bit about that further in the slides when we talk about flow. And the final is spiritual energy. So spiritual energy is the energy of meaning and purpose. So what is that? What, are, what do I mean by that? Spiritual energy is really derived from a connection to deeply held values and a sense of purpose beyond just ourselves. So spiritual energy is really maintained by balancing a commitment to a purpose beyond ourselves with adequate self-care for ourselves. And the literature says spiritual energy, if used, like harnessed effectively within us, can be even more powerful than physical energy. So I wanted to sort of engage you in the chat now. And, you know, we've heard about the four dim dimensions of energy, the body, the physical, emotional energy, mental energy, and spiritual energy. So why don't we learn from each other a little bit? Um, you know, if you can share some strategies which have helped you or will help you as you're thinking about this in these four aspects. So you can pick strategies that could help you in the emotional side or mental side, um, things that you've used in the past or things that you are considering of using. And I'm gonna just go into my chat and see what people post and read out some of the items. So don't, don't, feel, don't feel shy like the answers, there's no right and wrong answers here. Great, so I see I find meditation and yoga are very helpful. Excellent. I have emotions, music, positive people, daily walks, going for a long walks, helps on all four spheres, eating well, cooking and eating. I'm gonna just go up a little bit, that's great. Thank you for the engagement. Humor, I see that a little bit. Prayer, someone's added that. Meditation for the spirit, excellent. What else is there? Um, cooking and eating healthy for the body, Headspace, meditation app and walks outside. That's right. There's many wonderful free meditation apps available. Current example for me is to be snacking when I can. That's right. Maintaining your physical energy through that. Uh, reading, watching entertainment to de-stress, walks, laughter and gratitude. I love that, Nazira. 
doing crafts and going for walks, sleeping routine. That's right. It's really important to get seven to eight hours of sleep for us, uh, even though we're adults. Music, walks, quality time with family. That's really important. Maintaining your connections with people. Talking to Lindsay, someone put in there. So Lindsay is your support person. That's important to have support people, someone who can listen to you. Being creative, creating things. That's really important part of energy management. Exercise and family time, trying new things. That's right. That's part of creativity. Gym and dog walking. Excellent. Walk, hikes in nature, music, cooking, time alone. So reflection time. Hiking, pursuing your hobbies, reconnecting with family and friends, growing indoor plants, gardening, meditation is again, self-care, uh, prayer has been mentioned, fun things with the family, breathing techniques. That's right. And we're going to practice a few of those today. Jigsaw puzzles. That's an interesting one. Uh, funny movies. So some humor. So thank you. Thank you for humoring me and, and engaging in this uh, with me. So you can see there's lots of practices that we can utilize. And I hope this gave you a little bit of an idea of the kind of things that you may want to think about, right, as you're looking at making yourself more mentally resilient. So the next thing that I wanted to cover was in the area of flow. And why is flow important? Flow is another aspect of making yourself more resilient. So what does flow mean? So flow is a powerful way to become wakeful and, and present. So how do you do this? The best way to think about flow is to identify and engage in activities that bring you into a state of flow. So it's slightly different than energy management. I'll explain what that means. So, so flow activities help you become very focused on the present moment. You're very absorbed in that task and you lose track of time. And why is flow important again? Because as you experience more time in this state, it becomes easier for you to transfer this experience of flow into other activities. And you can bring it into your work aspects as well. So because everybody's personality is slightly different, right? We have different sorts of temperament. We have different ways of thinking. It's really important that you discover what are your flow activities. And in the next slide, we're going to explore a few flow activities. So I'm going to request you again, if you don't mind, to indulge me to go into the um, chat again. And you see some pictures of flow activities here. And, and if you don't mind just putting in the chat what might be some flow activities you see in here um, and what is other things that you may want to see as your flow activities, like if you want to share. So I see someone saying cooking is my flow. Music, I see music as someone else's flow, uh, painting, uh, singing, playing musical instruments, crafts, bike riding, cooking, going for walks. I love baking, that's right. Me too, I like eating the baking more than making it sometimes. Reading, physical exercise, exercise and workout gets people into their flow. Uh, baking and cooking again, music, Music for sure, people have added knitting. That's interesting. Talking to people, okay? Some people, you know, like the uh, being providing that empathetic ear and also having connection to people. So that brings you into your flow. Dancing, dancing with Hedy. Did I say that right? Music, yoga, and, and so many items. Uh, being a child again and playing with my children. And that's another really important aspect, right? And, and for some of us, those flow activities, it's really important that you think about what are your flow activities and sort of harnessing those, spending more time in those types of flow states so then you can transfer it. You know, and, and really one of the flow activities is really about building anything. So, you know, um, Jagjit, you were saying you, you do a lot of this in terms of spending time with your children. So if you build anything with your children, that's also being, part, you know, can be considered part of being flow. So the next area that I wanted to sort of bring this all together with is really presenting to you the, the idea of the energy management checklist or survey. So what have we done so far? I've walked you through the four types of energy. We've discussed some strategies to um, you know, restore your energy. We've talked about flow and flow activities. And this checklist I've shared with Mabel is part of a, a document that will be shared with you, all of you, after today's uh, webinar. And I encourage you to go into this energy management checklist. It won't take you long, a couple of minutes. 
completed. And in the as part of that, you will be able to then take a deeper dive and look at, okay, what are some specific things that I need to understand about myself and what practices, energy management practices can I further implement in my life in order to really um, enjoy myself more and, and be more resilient. So let's go to the next area, another sort of uh, really important part that I wanted to share about resiliency, which is this four steps um, for resiliency framework. And this is important because it kind of now starts to move us to how do we utilize resiliency in order to prepare ourselves to be more reflective. And reflection is a really critical component of being an agile leader. So the four components are listed on the slide, right? Uh, one is wake up, waking up and staying awake. The second uh, step is controlling your attention. The third is detaching. And the fourth is letting go. And when you apply these four steps, the key here is that you'll start to think of you know, as you're looking at reflection, you'll start to be more critical because you'll slow down your way of thinking and you'll be able to review the past and then think about the future and the lessons learned you've had from the past, you'll be able to more effectively apply it into the future. But let's get into the framework right now. So uh, let's, let's look at the first part, waking up and staying awake. So let's tr try this out now. I just wanted to grab your attention if you're looking at something or if you're thinking about something, just if, let's try the waking up part together. I'm going to read a few sentences and just, just listen to it as, as I explain to you what waking up means. So listen to the sounds that are in your environment right now. Hear the sounds that are close to you and the quieter ones in the background. Pay attention to the sensations under the soles of your feet. Feel the temperature on your face. See the shapes and colors of the objects in front of you, the screen, the keyboard. Notice that you can only connect your senses when you are in the present. When you do this with 100% attention, you're wide awake. So this is what really wide awake means. And we'll talk a little bit about further, we'll debrief on how people felt when I read, read this section out on the, the waking up part. So the next piece is controlling attention. So Part of uh, practicing controlling your attention is, first of all, you'll have to practice. It takes time. So initially, you'll be able to hold your attention for a small period of time. As you practice more, you'll be able to do it more and more for longer periods of time. And the key to do it, to do this, is to controlling your attention, is to practice consciously, putting your attention to what you want to focus on and to try and hold it there rather than move around to other issues or other stories or other situations that are pulling you away. So, so those are the first two steps, waking up and controlling your attention. What's the third one? So the third one is detaching. And what I mean by detaching is putting things into perspective. So learning not to sweat the small stuff, worrying less about things you cannot control Detached people seem to focus their time on issues they can actually influence. And we all know as leaders, we have lots of demands on us. So detaching is really critical in order to um, enhance our resiliency. And the fourth and final step is letting go. So letting go is learning to stop fixating on things that are not important. It's focusing on the bigger picture. And, and when you find yourself in the grip, right, of something that's really pestering you, Ask yourself, why is this so important to me? Am I unnecessarily worrying about something because, you know, for no reason? And if you are, then if you practice the fourth step of letting go in this framework, you'll be able to, you'll find that slowly as you practice this four-step framework, you'll get better and better at uh, maintaining your focus on things that really matter and also enhancing your resilience. So I'm going to show you this, this framework in a, a metaphor of a house that you see in this slide. And, and what I wanted to show you here was that this house can be thought of as that this, um, you know, this four steps framework that we can apply. Um, so just to remind you again, the four steps are waking up, controlling your attention, detaching and letting go. So imagine that the house is your mind. 
And the, flo the flood water outside is all the pressures, thoughts, and emotions you face each day. So first, let's wake up. Notice that as well as a front door, there's also a back door and a loft to this, to this house. Next, control your attention. Open the front and back doors so thoughts and stories can flow through. Then go up to the loft. Next, detach. Try detaching yourself. From there, you stay detached and observe the thoughts and feelings as they pass through as you're sitting at the top section of the, floor, the loft. Finally, let go. Don't get down and tangled up with your thoughts and don't try to hold them out. Simply let them come and let them go. When you practice this, you may start to notice that you feel more grounded and present. You may still face the same challenges, but you'll realize that you're kind of looking at things in a different way. You're much more detached. And what that means is that the big problems that you think are the actual issues may not seem big to you anymore. And you'll realize that a lot of what is in there is really your thoughts and your perspectives and your perceptions a lot of the times that are kind of preventing you from overcoming some of these thoughts and really detaching and letting go. So I hope this analogy kind of gave you a little bit more concretely what I meant by um, applying the four steps of the resilience framework. So one area that I wanted to share with you now that I've talked about this is really looking at micro behaviors and small moments. And it's really important integrating these smaller moments. So, you know, sometimes you don't have a time, you don't have the time in the day to take that long walk. So instead of that long walk, you know, and I took a picture, if you see the slide on the, on the side with the snow and the little shrubs, it kind of gives you an idea of what smile, small micro moments look like. They have to be spread throughout the day. And there's small moments that kind of fill your resiliency bank, like the piggy bank picture that you see. And it's really critical for you to plan these and think about these in advance and then plan them in your daily routine so that you're able to really, um, you know, not depend on just one strategy and some, not just one big thing that you'll do during the day, but some small things that you can practice during the day. And, and you really need a menu of options of small micro moments or small micro practices or behaviors that you can integrate during your day. And I'm gonna share three. So the first is you may wanna consider mu music. You know, some of you mentioned that as an energy management uh, practice. So think of a song, a resilience theme, theme song, and save it on your desktop or the YouTube link. And this theme song can either calm you down, depending on your personality, or can be a song that pumps you up. And next time you have a few minutes in your day, you play that song. And you can do that whenever you like, whenever you have a couple of moments, just integrating that little practice. The other one, um, another suggestion is a meditation timer. You know, take, if you have a couple of moments, uh, you can set a bookmark, a five minute Google timer, again, on your, web, on, your, on your Chrome web page, and you have a couple of moments in your day, take a short break, close your eyes, be still, and just breathe. That's another practice that you can utilize. And a third one is virtual nature. So I know many of you mentioned biking, hiking, those types of activities, but you can bring nature into your environment. There's some excellent websites that you can utilize where you can listen to the sounds of the forest from around the world. You know, you can look at different sort of, um, you know, you can set up things that allow you to, to observe the sea, the ocean. Um, you know, earthcam.com is one website that gives you sort of an idea. Um, uh, and, and I'm sure there's different apps out there as well that have forest songs. So again, something that you can build during your day. That would be something that I highly encourage that you think about and implement in your daily routine. So I hope so far we've been, you know, I've tried to keep us very practical and, and really embed some easy ways, hopefully, that we can ensure that we maintain our resiliency throughout the day through small micro moments. So an, another example of a, a small micro behavior is mindfulness. And mindfulness practices, you know, are, are really helpful if you can implement during your day a few practices related to this. And we're going to try out two today. So the first one is about single pointed mindful exercise. So I'm just gonna describe this one 
we won't try this one, we're gonna try the next exercise. So how does single, single pointed mindfulness exercise work? So the idea is to focus the mind on a single word, phrase, or the breath. This is really important for improving our control of attention and letting go. So if you remember the four steps framework, it really helps you in helping us get control and letting of our attention. So really focusing and letting go of whatever might be and detaching, whatever might be bothering us, stories, things that we're telling ourselves. So that's one exercise. The next one is we're going to try for 60 seconds. So first I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to start my timer. And I just wanted to make sure, um, you know, if, uh, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, um, Mabel, you've posted the, uh, the particular uh, handout that I'm going to be sharing that I was speaking about. Wonderful. So I, I'm just going to um, just get us centered a little bit. So this is going to be a 60 second exercise. Just make sure you get comfortable where you are in your chair. Just, you know, um, <clears throat> if you want to turn off your screen or if you just want to get yourself comfortable, um, in, in the spot there you in, please go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to read a little bit uh, about what to do um, as you're doing it, this, uh, this exercise, and then I'm going to start my timer. Okay. So this is a mindfulness meditation. And as part of this, simply close your eyes and observe whatever thoughts, feelings, or sensations come into your awareness. Regardless of what enters your mind, you simply stay present, stay detached, and let it go. Okay, and I'm just gonna start our timer now. Okay, so our minute is up. I hope you took, got a chance to just get a little bit of a break during your day and also try out this exercise. So I wanna start by asking you to, again, please engage with me in the chat. And there's two questions. First, the first question I want to, you to answer is, what did you notice? Just that, that first part. And then we'll talk about what, you know, how did you stay focused? But what did you notice as you were doing this? Okay, thank you, uh, Vanessa, for being uh, honest. I have a darting brain. I jump around a lot. So some of you, mind racing, lots of different thoughts popped into my head, lots of thoughts, found myself chasing the silence, then let it go, started playing in my, <laughs> in your head. Okay. I was aware of my breathing. Wonderful. Frequently trying to bring myself back. And that's very, very normal. That's very normal as you start to do this type of, that's why it's really critical as I was saying that you, ex that you practice this sort of framework. Difficult to focus, thinking about making lunch for the children. I agree with you, you know, someone, uh, someone said spaghetti brain. Realize I should have closed my office door. Very true, true Karen, that, that's important. Paid attention to breathing. Um, my feet are planted, someone said. So that's important. See, those are some tactics, right? You need to understand how you can get into that, uh, into that position so that you're able to get in and try these types of exercises. I had many thoughts, but I, but I ignored them for 60 seconds. That's wonderful, Mabel, um, right? So I think what many of you are saying is, you know, there's going to be a variety of responses to your, to you. Some of us, you know, um, maybe very new to this, 
the way we're thinking about focusing ourselves. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's all about practice. It takes time. But the idea is not to give up. And the more you practice, you'll start to realize that you'll figure out your what your stories are, that your, your thoughts, how do you manage and bring your thoughts back? Or how do you kind of let these other things that are kind of popping into your head just flow through? So how let's let's hear about how did you stay focused? What are some strategies that you used? Bring my bringing my attention back to my breath. I love that, Marianne. Let it go. So someone really applied the let it go. That's that's great. Oh, I love this, Rebecca. Picturing a river flowing. So you really use that visualization piece and had a picture in your head. That's great. Deep breaths. That's really critical. Breathing. Great, Maria. So breathing. Um, no, those those are important things to get your focus. I also want to go back to someone who said, uh, I, um, Arlene said, I, you know, I planted my feet, right? My feet were planted. I really paid attention to my breath. And those are, I think, some of the critical ways that you can get better and better, as I was mentioning, to this idea of relaxing yourself and paying attention and letting go. Um, Jigjit said, bringing back self back to the moment, taking a deep breath. That's right. And think about the house, right? And the fact that you over time as you practice this, you know, you're almost like a little bit detached. And those thoughts that you have just come and go through you, but you're focusing and you're controlling your attention. So so I hope you found this to be a, um, you know, a helpful exercise. And I would suggest, you know, if you have a close buddy at work or a partner, Try and just, you know, try this together or maybe you try it at different times and then talk about what strategies work for them and what work for you and swap and learn from each other. I, I think that would really make a big difference over time. And remember, nobody's perfect at this. It just requires practice and working towards it. So let's go into the next slide where we're going to now kind of think about, OK, we've now learned, as I was saying, energy management practices flow. We've looked at the four steps framework for resiliency and we've tried a mindfulness exercise. And I want to bring you back now to learning agility and, and how does this all connect? So a key component, right, of learning agility is to be a reflective thinker. And why is that important? Because simply having novel experiences or new learning experiences is not enough. It's really important to go back and reflect and think about how we behaved, what were our assumptions, what are some things we could do differently next time? And that really best, the most effective leaders make time for reflection, make the most from their experiences. So I wanted to read this quote that I've posted here from Peter Drucker, who's a writer and management consultant. And what he's saying is, follow effective action with quiet, quiet reflection. From the quiet reflection will come even more effective action. So really the next step is now that we've learned some resiliency practices is really to prepare us for this quiet reflection, this thoughtful reflection. And now we're gonna learn what are some key tools for reflection that we can utilize that we can then help us become um, agile leaders and learners. So the first one is the, the three P's of probing framework. And this framework is really there for you to think about a situation, a complex situation maybe you're facing at work or in your personal life. You can use it anywhere. And the idea here is for you to not look at the problem at hand just superficially. It's going to, the questions help you go deeper and take a deeper dive and insight into the root causes. Uh, of what the actual situation is about. So the framework has these, you know, the, the why, how, and what questions, and they form the three components of this particular framework. So, so the first was one is think of purpose and ask yourself why questions. Why have we used this approach, process, or tool? The second one is about um, the thinking, you need to think about the practices. So then in this section, you ask yourself how questions. How effective is this approach? 
And you can ask yourself many other how questions, right? How effective is this approach? How come we've been doing this for so long? How can we, um, you know, how can we assess whether this is having an impact on our clients? Lots of those how, how, how types of questions. And then think of possibilities as the third piece and ask yourself what questions? What if we try something different? And using sort of these three why, how, and what questions, you can really get deeper into um, some complex problems that you face. And it can, it'll also help you become a more agile leader. The, the next um, tool that I wanna share is about thinking of creating rule of thumbs or some guiding principles and, and in doing that through reflection. So what I mean, why, why do we wanna create rule of thumbs or guiding principles for ourselves? Well, it's really critical, especially in our high fit paced environment. And, and for many of us, right, working in healthcare with COVID, things have been quite hectic, right? And, but in a regular way, healthcare is complex, right? So you want rule of thumbs. So once you've done a refl reflection, and you've asked yourself some critical question, a rule of thumb or guiding principles can be really helpful for you to keep in your back pocket for future situ situations. So it's really critical that when you do this exercise that I'm showing you on the slide, you record as much detail as you're doing the reflection. So some of us, you know, are going to record in a journal. Some of us like to write. Some of us like to record. You can record yourself on the phone, right? And then you can uh, listen to your reflection and, and as you're go going through the questions. Some of us like to draw. There's no rules around this. You can, you know, create a mind map and you can write out or draw out uh, your reflection and then go back to it in the future. So, so just I encourage you to document as you do this, this reflection exercise. So the first step is you're going to start with the experience and you're going to think of an experience you had that was something that, you know, was fairly, I would say, a, a big deal for you, something that you got engaged in a project a experience that was new to you. Um, and you don't have to just reflect on experiences that are work related. You tried a new experience, um, bungee jumping, not, not that, you know, something different that you tried, photography, something that you tried for the first time. And what you need to think about is in this experience, what specific actions did you take to make sense of the situation? And why did you approach the situation this way? So that's the first thing you're going to sort of think about as you think of this, the, about yourself. Then the next piece is reflect on your learnings from the experience. So then ask yourself these three questions. Things I learned about doing my job, things I learned about working with others, things that I learned about myself. So once you've done this, you know, the first part is starting with the experience. The first, the second is then going deeper about what did you learn about yourself. And as you do that, Review what you gathered as part of your reflection and try to express these as simple rules for yourself or rule of thumbs as I call it. So the next time as you go forward, you can apply these rules of thumb in the, the work you do uh, in your personal life or at work. So we're gonna go back and I'd love to engage you again and learn from you. How, if you can post in the chat, how might this type of reflection, the two reflection exercise that I've spoken about help you in becoming an agile learner? How, how might that help you in your day-to-day? -day? I'm just going to go into the chat. Thank you, uh, Vanessa. It's, it says increasing self-awareness, wonderful. I agree with you. It definitely helps you increase your self-awareness. Letting it go. I, I really like that from Liz. It helps you let go. So it helps you in resiliency as well. That's great. Okay, Frida is like, so we will not fall into the same traps and mistakes again. Very true. Maria is saying, um, you can review what you said and continue to reflect on this. Exactly. So it's in a way like a continuous learning process, right? So we know as adults, we want to be able to continually grow ourselves and develop. So this is a great way of continually reflecting, 
right? And, and using these practices will make you a, a continuous reflector and a very agile leader. Lessons learned, things to do different. That's right, Rebecca, thank you for that. Bonnie saying, remember, remembering to take a step back and focus on me. Exactly. It's about also, it's also strength-based, right? So based on what Bonnie's saying is, this is, reflective learning is not, all, also, is not always about what you didn't, didn't do well. It's also recognizing what your strengths are. Because remember, the flow and the strengths part that we talked about is all about activities you enjoy, right? So as you reflect, you learn about yourself and you'll say, you know, I did that really well. And, and how do I do more of that? And then through that, you'll find your flow activities. So thank you. I really like that comment, Bonnie. Become more mindful, Mabel saying. I agree with you fully, right? You're, 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 this way allows you to be mindful in all the work and the type of thinking you're going to be doing. Being able to make more informed decisions next time. Chloe, that's right. Uh, it really helps you be, I would say, you know, it, becomes, it helps you be a more effective leader at work and in also in your personal life. Increasing ability to build on past learnings. That's right. And this is really, really the crux of reflection is the idea that you just don't like agile learners just don't go into novel situations and then leave and say, bye, that's it, I'm gone. The idea is that you really think about what you learn from it. How, what did you do well? What are you gonna do differently? What did I learn about the world around me? And, and as I was mentioning, some of those rules of thumb. Sense of purpose. I really like that. Um, thank you. And I was, as I was mentioning to you, you know, that whole idea of learning about yourself, what your true purpose is, and um, learning agile individuals, really, what are your values that are guiding you? From this type of thinking, you can get to that core. And that sense of purpose, again, then, as I was mentioning earlier, brings you back to your flow activities. And what do you really enjoy? What do you really want to do in life to make an impact on this world? And we know many of us in healthcare are in healthcare because we want to make a difference in people's lives. And this just takes us, I would say, to the next step to clarify things more for us. So thank you so much. This is really wonderful. You've engaged beautifully in the conversation. So I'm going to go to our sort of final summary slide. And I wanted to share this um, kind of the, this diagram with you about learning agility but I want to really summarize what we've learned today so let, let's the, the first thing right now with COVID and in generally in healthcare is that our environments are complex we're dealing with you know complex clients but also sometimes life and death issues so we are definitely in a high challenge environment we're working in a high stress environment and it's real. what we've learned today is we've learned ways to enhance our mental resiliency, right? And we've learned about energy management practices. We've learned about the four steps framework. We've um, learned about two mindful ex mindfulness exercises so that we are resilient. And resiliency really me means the ability to focus and to be in the moment and to be able to give yourself that sense of um, balance and calm. And that's a really critical skill to have um, in order to be an agile learner. So then, you know, what does the agile learner then need to do as, as a next step? So, so if we're putting all these resiliency practices that we've learned and, 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 and the reflection practices that we talked about today, even though I would say we're in a high challenge environment, we can create a high, I would say, support environment for ourselves based on what I've, I've just shared. So we can take this experience that might, I would say, be challenging for us right now, but at the same time, we can utilize the practices and we can reflect and we can learn new things and we can unlearn and relearn new things. And that's really the point of recognizing that maybe you know there is an opportunity in the challenges that we're presented with. And that's the mindset of an agile learner, is to take that opportunity to learn from novel and challenging situations and, and being able to pull from that and continuously better ourselves and make ourselves um, you know, more agile and effective leaders. So with that, I wanted to sort of uh, close our, our session today. And uh, Mabel, I, I have, uh, I'm sure we have some questions from the audience. I'm happy to take that. 